Hey guys, what's going on? So I just wanted to do a little bit different of a video today. I wanted to go back to the Justice League and kind of just give some plot points as to what I think they could have done differently to make it even bigger and what I think this could eventually lead to in the new Justice League if we're able to get to that point under James Gunn's new direction with DC and with Warner Brothers. So I just wanted to start off with a little bit of a background give a little bit of a comparison and using Marvel's The Avengers as a guide for what my points are here. And then I'll go a little bit into detail into how I think it could have been different and how I think it could have been better. And then I'll again wrap up with uh, the future and what James Gunn can do to kind of utilize some of the Avengers and Marvel's blueprints. And he is, of course, also part of that process. He was in there for Guardians. I think it was the second movie. So he definitely is familiar with that. And I think he likely is going to do something like this. But we'll go ahead and just get started. So I think first up, you had a lot of DC set up going on the past decade or so. But it really seemed like they rushed it too much to really try and compete with the Avengers. And I think it's pretty safe to say that the Avengers stole the spotlight. Really big box office hits with the Infinity War and Endgame, as well as their whole series of movies that set everything up. I think they did a phenomenal job establishing a big continuity for the MCU. But I will say, I don't think the Avengers IP is as big as the Justice League in terms of where it was at before. When you maybe compare something like both the animated shows for the Justice League and the uh, Avengers or some of the Marvel characters I would say that the Justice League was the bigger franchise by far and even comic books both uh, huge brands but I'd really say the Justice League would take the edge in terms of overall popularity but I just really think in recent years they haven't gotten the exact turnout that they wanted and the exact turnout that the characters deserve and I think that's really just due to execution. I wouldn't say it's due to the characters in terms of their sorts material or anything like that. So I really think the major difference is that DC didn't do nearly enough to set up their continuity and their franchise for the Justice League movie in comparison to Marvel. You had the Iron Man movies and then you had the Captain America spinoff movies or the solo movies. Then you had the Thor solo movies, and you had a lot of the other Avengers members lumped into that, featuring in some of those films. You even had other additions that came on later, such as Black Panther and the Guardians of the Galaxy also helping out and participating. So really, you had all of these groups of characters coming together in what took years to establish you had a lot of these same actors, maybe just a few recasting moments with someone like Colonel Rhodes, but really nothing major there. And they planted a ton of seeds in the post credit scenes and whatnot. Uh, so it really just gained a ton of momentum and sparked curiosity over time to get to that climax with Infinity War. And I just don't think that DC really replicated this magic really at any scale in comparison to what Marvel was able to do. I would say though you did have a pretty good build up with Henry Cavill's Superman. Same thing with Wonder Woman. Pretty good box office turnout there and I think Gal Gadot did a really good job portraying her. I would even say Jason Momoa's Aquaman wasn't bad as well. But I really think they just rushed it in terms of you kind of squeezed in the Flash in the Justice League. He didn't really have any background before that. Same thing with Cyborg. It kind of just felt like they were trying to fill in those missing pieces to get a Justice League movie out there. And of course you have the whole thing with the Snyder Cut. But I'm not really going to focus on that in this video. And I really think not only were characters like the Flash and Cyborg completely rushed. But there really was just a completely limited number of core members. So I really think they could have done a lot more to add other core members of the Justice League. They wouldn't have to go overboard. But I just think there was a lot of crucial ones 
missing. And then I think the major thing is that, well, I think Ben Affleck's Batman was a good fit in terms of being a more fantastical version than what we saw previously. I still think Christian Bale's portrayal of the character was fresh on everyone's mind. So in terms of continuity, it would have been really neat to see him continue his role as Batman in the Justice League. But I will say it probably would have significantly taken away from that grounded fill in the Christopher Nolan trilogy. So I don't necessarily know if I would have wanted this to happen. But I think for the sake of this video, it would have been neat for continuity. But also, I don't think Ben Affleck's Batman was poorly executed. And I don't really think that has much to do with it. Though it is obviously something to mention because you really had the Christopher Nolan Batman kind of being what could have been the groundwork in comparison to those three Iron Man movies that kind of really set up the MCU. And then again, you had a good Superman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman were all fine, but really a lot of work was needed to both amplify and establish the other members. For one, if you didn't want to spend uh, any more time doing solo films, they could have possibly borrowed from something like the CW. You could have included Grant Gustin's The Flash and or Stephen Amell's Green Arrow. Both of them are core members of the league, and this would have established a little bit more continuity and brought in some more fans from both of those shows. So I really think it would have been neat to see all of those actors get together to play their roles. But the CW isn't really, I guess, seen on the same par as something as the DCU or the old DC Extended Universe. So maybe it would have been a little bit funky to throw them in there, but it's just an idea for something that they could have done differently. Or they could have done some new uh, solo films. And then also, I think it has to be mentioned due to a unfortunate turn of events, really had Ezra Miller's character of The Flash not turning out to be very good for a number of reasons, both on and off the screen. They wouldn't really have been able to foresee that, but I think in theory, if you had a different actor playing The Flash and you maybe did a Flash solo movie before the Justice League instead of after that recent one we got, I think it would have been much worse better accepted and it would have again established some more continuity and you could have maybe had someone like a new green arrow to really kind of set the groundwork for what could happen in that future justice league movie and maybe some other cameos to introduce characters and stuff like that and then i will say in addition to those two another major flaw that i have with the Justice League movie is that there wasn't any Martian Manhunter. I would say he's one of the main members of the league, so I was a little bit shocked to see that they didn't include him. He was in those deleted scenes, but I really just don't understand why you wouldn't uh, build the plot around him being one of those main members. I'm sure it's a little bit harder with CGI and kind of getting his character appearance to be right. But again, comparing this to something like Marvel and the Avengers, Looking at someone like Vision, I didn't think he looked bad at all. I think he looked really well for his character. So I think kind of the same style could have been used for someone like Martian Manhunter. In addition to him, there could have been a lot more other members. Again, if they had the chance to do more films or just include them in one way or another, I think you could have thrown Hawk Girl in there, who's also another major one. Another major one that was lacking is Green Lantern. You really only have the Ryan Reynolds solo film, so there hasn't been anything done with Green Lantern. I think that's, again, maybe an option for James Gunn in the future. But really to get away from Ryan Reynolds' version of it, you could have maybe gone the route in terms of a Jon Stewart version of Green Lantern. You could have done a solo film for that or just included him in there one way or another. So I think he would have been a really good addition to the team. And if you even wanted some more uh, extension with the Justice League, you could throw in someone like Black Canary with Green Arrow. You could throw in Vixen, Shazam. But that's probably pushing it too much. I think if you just had the core members in terms of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and then you had Martian Manhunter, you had a different Flash, you had Green Lantern. 
maybe a green arrow in there too kind of like hawkeye i think that would be a really good group to start off with and then you could expand after that just to get a little bit more volume on the team itself so now that you would have had your justice league members set up i think another major problem with the justice league film was that there wasn't really a strong antagonist not in terms of strength but there really wasn't a captivating villain you had the kind of Steppenwolf and Dark Side duo, but I just don't think there was enough to add any stakes in the matter in terms of both the plot and their character development. When you look at Infinity War, for instance, I think how someone like Thanos really works well in that captivating villain role, even though he is more of that alien species, is that they really did a lot to humanize him in terms of his dialect in terms of his intellect, which really made Thanos take a lot of attention when he was on screen. And you just don't have that effect with either Steppenwolf or Darkseid. And while I don't think either of them should have been a Thanos ripoff, I think there could have been a lot of different other paths they could have taken for the villain and saved either of them for later if they did a sequel or even a trilogy or something like that. And in addition with those two characters, I think the whole kind of plot point of them chasing these mother boxes also just really seems like a complete cheap knockoff of the infinity stones in the infinity war and endgame movies so i think it was extremely rushed in a lot of these aspects and not a lot of emphasis was really put on the so what so i think instead of that one great option to utilize would have been someone like Lex Luthor. I wouldn't say you've really gotten a strong version of him in live action. I think Jesse Eisenberg's uh, portrayal of him wasn't really strong enough for that to carry on to the Justice League. So I think they should have casted someone with a little bit more presence. And I think he could have been a major villain for the whole Justice League. Another unique option I think that they could have done with that could have worked would be to utilize the Starro plot points or the alien starfish with the whole mind control thing because this could have set up something really interesting such as some of the members possibly having to fight each other this could be to uh, some of them getting taken over or infected and then having to really kind of have almost like a civil war between each other and this could even lead to an, an infinity war uh, more dark ending where the majority of the members, if not all of them, end up getting infected in the end. And maybe you have someone like Batman who's still the only one that hasn't been taken over by the starfish. And then maybe in a sequel or a trilogy or something like that, you could have room to utilize the contingency plan where Batman's able to use his strategy and planning to take out all of the Justice League members or just eliminate them to get rid of their spell so i think that could have been really interesting i think you also could have done something with brainiac so really the main two things here is that they didn't do enough to establish continuity they really didn't include nearly enough members uh, and just a really weak antagonist so i think that source material is definitely here to make some really huge box office hits for justice league movies in the future i hope james gunn's really able to do a good job with this and maybe he can do more of those solo films whether it's to establish all of these new characters the new batman the new superman even other characters such as green lantern or green arrow for instance i think both of them could be an interesting take for a solo film and i hope he's able to venture into that but really interesting to see what he has in the works so we'll see what happens feel free to let me know what you guys think uh, what you really liked about the justice league what you didn't like ideas you guys have what you're looking forward to seeing in the future i appreciate you watching and i'll see you later